The original House of the Dead is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. The main problem of why it stunk? This guy. So when they announced a sequel, I was pretty annoyed. There were plenty of good movies out there that actually deserved sequels but never got one, and yet this gets a sequel? Then I looked into it a little bit more and found out that not only did Uwe Boll have nothing to do with the sequel, but that the writer, Mark Altman, was looking to do everything in his power to distance this movie from the first. Even though the sequel cost a fraction of what the original did, it was better in every single possible way. House of the Dead sucks. House of the Dead 2 does not. Not even a little. House of the Dead 2 is a comedic action horror film from director Michael Hurst. It's based on the long-running video game shooter franchise from Sega. The movie opens with a bunch of frat guys attacking a local sorority, the ZIT. Look, I said it was good. I didn't say that it was mature. You've tried the rest. Now try the best. Oh, gross! <laughs> well, two minutes in and this is already better than the first movie. One of the sorority girls is having sex with the brother from Blossom? That's the weirdest tramp stamp I've ever seen. It's like a dude is jumping into her butthole. I saved myself for you! I did not know that one of my pledges was gonna do this! I oh, promise! I pr Upset, the girl walks home and gets run over by Professor Curian. He's been killing co-eds in an attempt to bring them back to life with a serum he's been working on. You might want to trim that eyebrow there, doctor. He injects her with a serum, but nothing happens. The serum actually worked, but it brought the girl back as a zombie, and she kills the professor. Twenty-nine days later. If you have a problem, and no one else can help, maybe you can hire the a AMS. Ellis, one of the agents of the team called AMS, is getting a mission update. He's notified of a zombie outbreak and goes to get his partner Nightingale. At a local restaurant, Alexander Nightingale Morgan is having dinner. The chef goes outside and sees the zombie professor. Alright, who left the smoke machine on? The professor bites the chef. Nightingale hears the commotion in the kitchen, kills the chef, and takes the bitten waiter away. So, what do you really do for a living? I kill zombies. Good thing she just so happened to be having dinner right by where the zombie outbreak was happening. The waiter drank too many shamrock shakes, so they shoot him in the head. They go to a local AMS bunker, and what is this guy shooting at? AMS is being sent to the college campus with some special forces cannon fodder to contain the outbreak and get blood samples from the zombies. It's the magical disappearing and reappearing zombie blood. In this elite special forces troop, they have nothing but the toughest, strongest soldiers and one fat guy. I'm gonna guess he's the officer in charge of comedic relief. Leading the special forces team is Dalton. He keeps insisting that someone give him the microphone before he busts in his pants. They get to the outskirts of town and immediately run into some zombies. One of the soldiers gets bit. No, 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 no. Sorry, Doc. I think the FX guys messed up the location of his muzzle flare. They make their way to Ground Zero, the Cuesta Verde University. Empty. I think we took them all out. You killed two of them. I'm pretty sure there's more. Bart, Hansen, and Rodriguez are investigating the campus and find a topless zombie chick. Take the picture. No fucking way! Oh, fine. Bart is an asshole, but this is kind of the thing I could see people doing during a zombie outbreak. Hunters take pictures of themselves next to a dead deer or holding up a string of fish. This, in a weird way, is kind of the same thing. Bart gets a mosquito bite, and they deduce that the mosquitoes have been spreading the infection. Hansen ties him up and leaves him behind. Griffin hears some crying and goes to investigate. Pills here! Damn it, Lewis! Don't do it! Don't startle the witch! <laughs> Dalton gets bitten and Nightingale shoots him. They just like spraying her in the face with blood, don't they? All this noise attracted some more zombies and they kill O'Connell. Hansen and Rodriguez go back to the AMS van, but Rodriguez gets killed. Nightingale and Ellis find the professor's lab. They run into two of the professor's lab assistants who explain the tie-in with the original movie. The girl the professor has confined was the survivor from the first movie. Now let us never speak of it again. They go in to get a blood sample, but all this noise attracted the zombies and they kill the lab assistants. Alicia is the first generation zombie that they're looking for, so now they have the sample they need. Alicia attacks Ellis and he shoots her. Wait. We've already established that the virus is transmitted via blood, and yet he wipes it in his mouth. I think this zombie's copping a feel. In pure Resident Evil fashion, they have to evacuate the town because there's a missile coming. They get outside and Hansen rescues them in the AMS van, but one of the zombies breaks the blood vial. They head back to the lab to get another sample. This chick again? <laughs> 
Ellis has to sneak past the zombies, so he has an idea. It's like the gels we used to use to try to attack dogs. And I thought they smelled bad on the outside. Did they run out of zombie makeup? Yeah, just uh, shimmy around like you're one of them, okay? No one will notice. No wonder the door didn't hold the zombies back. It's made out of cardboard. They get back to the lab, but Henson gets bit. Nightingale then gets a new sample. Hold on. This whole time, they've been keeping the zombies alive while they get the sample. If they can get the sample after they're dead, why did they take the risk all of these times? Hey, Ellis. Yeah, Henson. I got a sister. Hopefully a twin sister? The missile's coming, but they get trapped in the lobby of the college. They fight their way out, but Nightingale gets cornered and hides under a table. Ellis escapes, but the missile hits the building with Nightingale in it. Ellis runs into Bart, who's a little crazy after cutting off his hand to escape. Nightingale rescues Ellis, and how the hell did she survive? I didn't know an Ikea table was strong enough to withstand a tactical missile strike. Nightingale and Ellis escape the town, but see that the nearby city has already been overrun. The movie was filmed mostly in and around Occidental College in East L.A. College, California, in 29 days for about $6 million. After the disaster of the first movie, writer-producer Mark Altman contacted director Michael Hurst, who was also a friend of his. He sent him a copy of the first movie, along with a copy of the script of the second, and a note that he wanted to make the second movie as different as possible from the first. He said one of the many reasons why the first movie was such a mess was because director Yu Bol threw out more than half the original screenplay and just added in a bunch of garbage on the fly. Things like his weird insistence to include random footage from the games in it and a bizarre, completely unnecessary 20-minute gunfight. With the sequel, they only had $6 million, as opposed to the $14 million the original had. However, the quality between the two is staggering. In the second one, the action was better, the makeup was better, and with the exception of Jurgen Prochnow and Clint Howard, the actors were better. They had Ed Quinn from Eureka, Emmanuel Vogier from One Tree Hill and Smallville, Victoria Pratt from Mutant X and Cleopatra 2525, Sid Haig from Just About Everything, Sticky Fingers from Onyx, and James Parks from Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2. Even though they tried to distance themselves from the first movie, there were still a few ties. Casper, who had her legs ripped off in the first movie, was back only in a wheelchair. The character of Alicia came back, only with a different actress as the person who brought the zombie plague to the mainland. They wanted the movie to have a tongue-in-cheek vibe, which is why they included so many silly moments. Goofs on other films. Even now, you hold the secrets of eternal life within you. And you hold on to them, keeping me alone. Alone. In the dark. Oh, don't reference that movie. They also made sure to include references to the games by having characters like Dr. Curian and having the characters use the famous reload line. Reload! This makes a hell of a lot more sense than just putting in actual game footage. You know why this movie looks better than the original, even though they had half the budget? Because Michael Hurst is a good director. He knows how to work with what he has and surrounded himself with talented people. For example, they hired Ray Stella as his cinematographer. Stella was the Steadicam operator that filmed the iconic opening shot in the original Halloween. The movie was almost entirely shot with a Steadicam, which is very unusual, but in this case it worked. It made the scenes energetic without falling into the trend of shaking the camera like you were having a seizure. The editor of Saw did the title sequence. Lionsgate liked Emmanuel Vogier in this so much that it led to her getting the role in Saw 2. The chef in the film was one of the movie's producers. He wanted to be a zombie so he could get shot in the head. As a rule, you never want to set off a squib on your head because, well, this happens. That lump was a real welt left after the squib went off. The producer didn't care, though, because he thought it was awesome he just got killed in the movie. The other thing this movie did was have likable characters. Even though Bart was an asshole, he did have some funny moments. In the original, they all just sucked. Not the actor's fault, they were just working with what they were given. Quentin Tarantino is friends with actor James Parks, and he cast him in a bunch of his films. He came to the premiere of House of the Dead 2 and was a big fan. The Special Forces team in the movie was influenced by the Marines of Aliens. That's writer-producer Mark Altman and producer Chuck Speed in the flashback. This movie did so many things right. The action, the humor, the pacing, the copious amounts of nudity, all make for a very enjoyable zombie flick. The director wanted it to have a 50s horror vibe mixed with the sensibilities and pacing of an 80s action flick. It's a shame they had to make this a sequel instead of turning it into its own standalone product because it will forever be tied to the first movie, which in turn is why a lot of people have never seen it. 
However, what I don't understand is how they weren't able to make a sequel to this. They set it up to continue, but Lionsgate chose to stop the franchise here. Meanwhile, Bull gets to make In the Name of the King 1, In the Name of the King 2, Two Worlds, and he's currently working on In the Name of the King 3. Also, Blood Rain, Blood Rain Deliverance, Blood Rain the Third Reich, and even the spin-off Blubberella. Fucking zombie geek.